don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Six feet deep, wonder, but my body won't decay Cause my messages are timeless So they'll put them on display Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty I have a sense of urgency A message for eternity For everyone internally I had some people burning me But now they fucking learn to see I ain't the one to fuck with shit my way so you can go kick rocks i'ma stack bricks up build what i want to make cause i don't give a fuck what you say yeah i'ma do shit my way so you can go kick rocks i'ma stack bricks up build what i want to make yeah i'ma do it my way oh yeah man True Slinger coming at you one more time, 190 times plus with Hippie Chick on my side, getting ready to correct me at any moment, hold up some piece of paper that goes, don't forget to thank your guest today, Matt, for coming. Well, thank you so much already. He's not here yet. I haven't got brought him on yet, but we got the guest today. Boy, I am so excited. Hair is on end, right? We got Matt Baker today with us. Well, who is Matt Baker? God, give me my piece of paper back, Mama. <laughs> Matt Baker, God, he is just a madman, right? I, I I noticed this guy back. He made his uh, chops on the COVID stuff, man. COVID, he started fighting back, and this guy, just madman, bursts on the scene, right, and uh, starts speaking his mind, calling down the Holy Spirit fire on people. And so, yeah, you know what? I, I don't want to talk too much about him. I just want to get him on because that's what I want to do is highlight my very, very first guest today, and that would be my friend, new friend, Matt Baker. Hey, what's going on, dude? What's up, brother? You hear me loud and clear? Oh, loud and clear. I'm so excited. To have you here today, brother. <laughs> I uh, couldn't have it any other way, you know? Man, Truth are... Slinger. I love that name. You know, it's a good one. It's like uh, Gunslinger, but Truth Slinger. It's That's tight. It's exactly when you went for the, I was, the vibe I was going with when I did the uh, merching and all that shit. I did all this stuff like a year yeah. ago. I put together all this stuff. So, and God's been blessing it. But you know what? He's lifting up men and he's lifting up men like me and you. And that's why I'm so excited to have you here because I've just felt a kindred spirit with you. I reached out one time and I prayed for your wife and one or two times on, on X, uh, we crossed paths and, uh, and I was just thrilled and, and humbled to be able that you would talk to a guy like me that's coming up and whatever. Ah, come on. Oh, I love it. 
we're all in, we're all in this together, brother. You know what I mean? It's like uh, if we're not here for our brothers and sisters, then what are we here for? I mean, uh, amen to that, you brother. Never know, and you can always see there are people that start just get started, and then the next year they're blowing up, and now you're begging to get on their show. So. Let's let's, let's not let's, let's not go there. I'm, I'm stoked sure. to be here. You're awesome. I, I dig your uh, I dig your show. So cool. Let's well, do that's it. A, that's a huge compliment coming. So <laughs> anyway, listen. I I I just you're 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 just crazy, man. I what I love about you, and I was talking to you a little bit before the show, is you know the the reason you know I'm the true slinger, but I'm not the true slinger. You are a true slinger. Okay. You came out on fire a few times, and you still got that fire going on. And, and here's what I want to do. I want to Look at this last video you had. I want to talk a little bit about the trucker conference and so you know also some whatever stuff that you want to talk about. But um, yeah, but your latest uh, latest fire you did in San Diego just a couple of days ago, right? Uh, right. Tell me yep. about down that. to San Ysidro, uh yeah. trucker convoy. Yep. Take our borders back. Cool. Set that set that up a little bit while I pop this open here. All right. Well, so, you know, you had it coming out. There was like the doc was on talking about the border convoy. Everybody's been losing. Michael Yon's been pointing out the border invasion. I mean, what's going on with the asylum? It's just out of control. Personally, I think it's real. It's the, the whole problem is based on the asylum situation and not necessarily the border proper itself. I mean, fentanyl's coming through the border, but the actual, um, illegal aliens it's really because there's a giant carrot over here where we're giving them a bunch of free crap and we're not vetting the asylum people barely at all so they they know they call their friends when they get over with the free cell phones they get they're like yeah man it's great come on over yeah you know it's like we're getting all this free stuff and they just cut now they're just coming it's like it grow exponential growth you get a few brave people in a few towns in africa or china or wherever they decide to give it a try they come over they get a free cell phone the first thing they do is call their brothers and sisters be like dude you got no idea they're kissing my ass over here i'm getting everything for free yeah so it's oh, like yeah. and then they and then their friends and then their friends and then their friends and it's just it's becoming a literal invasion i mean in any other uh time of history people would have been stopping them like military force at the border being like no this is our area you guys gotta get the fuck out right but because we just allow it it's not there it's not an invasion they're just it's, like it's a it's force like, it's a force, I mean, force stand down i just don't under i, I can't even yeah. imagine the the, the, the be, being somebody that is working for customs and border patrol right now i mean can you imagine having to be a bellhop and a babysitter and 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 deal with this in my opinion what's treasonous behavior okay this is aid and, and comfort to the enemy if you really want to come down to it let's let's listen absolutely to, let's listen to this rant you did and we can talk about it, it is yeah hello san diego can you feel the power in the air? Can you feel that power? Feel the ground beneath your feet? Whose dirt is this dirt? This is our dirt. This is our land. Throughout every age, every piece of dirt people have died for. They have died to keep that dirt. The American people have died. Our forefathers, our grandfathers died in wars to keep this ground sacred. Amen. It is our turn now. We have to hold this ground because it is ours. Amen. They want us to be afraid. They wanted us to be afraid to come out here and to gather again after January 6th, That's after right. the giant setup where they set up the American patriots yep. to make us look bad. The very people whose blood spills through this country. Amen. Are you afraid? No. Are you afraid? No. no, we are not afraid. And this government is going to start working for the American people and not against us. They undermine us at every turn. They bring in foreign citizens and teach them better than our veterans. They give them free everything while old women die in homes alone. We have homeless people living on our streets that need our help. We don't 
don't have money for the rest of the world. We need to be America first. Say it with me. America first. America first. America first. And with that attitude, we will never lose. Yeah. Yeah, I love it, dude. Love it, dude. <clears throat> You know, it, yeah, man. She, shouting <laughs> from the rooftops, right? And it's every direction, but I think, right? And it's all the globalism that this is. This is the whole new world order. This is the whole thing of, of the destruction of American exceptionalism, right? Everything that we held true, all our values, everything that we grew up with. You know, a couple of years ago, I woke up and said, holy crap, it's all been a lie. And it's being, I've never seen any sort of deconstruction of this country that's happened so quickly in the last three years have you no man it's mind-boggling and and like i say the the government is undermining us actively it's like if you were to sit there and decide how to build a country you say oh well we need strong families we need strong businesses we need strong this we need strong borders whatever you would use whatever pillar that that building would be built upon is exactly what they are undermining and sawing the legs out from underneath it's it's to a t Every single thing they can do to weaken and collapse America. And people on the left just hate America. You know, we may or the American people may have done some bad things in the past. But what my point about this, it being our land, and I've had some pushback. People say, it's your land. Oh, the Native Americans, this and that. And I love the Native Americans. My wife's actually Mexican. She's a hippie chick, too. And people, the thing is, if, if you own something, you can't just piss it away. So I didn't do the killing. I wasn't part of any of that stuff. The fact is, is this is now our building. It's like your home. Your dad leaves you a house. You let it rot. You let random people move in and start pissing on the couch. Right. No, you got to take care of what is yours, what has been gifted to you. If I give you just, it's just a gift for Christmas and you throw it in the trash, that piss me off. But if I died, almost died, or my brother died to give me the gift to give to you, and then you throw it away, that's a whole nother level of disrespect. And the Native Americans that live here are actually, believe it or not, the number one people that sign up to, to defend America. Number one percentage per capita are Native Americans. Oh, and they did a whole that. documentary on it. Yeah. Um, and they're saying, yeah, well, this is still our land and we still want to protect it, you know, and, and there's some bad things that have happened in the past. But let's not kid ourselves. America's fucking awesome. And nobody wants to live anywhere else. And when you're standing there at that border, like I was earlier that morning, and I'll tell you, there, there's no Mexicans there. There is no Mexicans. And the Mexican people are sick of this shit, too, because their entire country is now just a, just a corridor sure, for yeah, these right. marauders to come through. And they'll steal and rape on their way through. And they just jump back on the train. And then they go on down the road. And nobody ever finds them. Nothing ever happens. They're not having fun with this situation. The southern border in Mexico is a shit show and they're collapsing based on that too. And it's all because we're waving the carrot all the way up here. So it's ruining Mexico. It's ruining America. It's ruining the borders. And I dare to say it's actually ruining a lot of these other countries. Uh, some of these people, they always say they're the worst people, but you know, when I go down there, I see, I see a lot of pretty healthy middle-aged guys. They say military age men, but those are the same men that could be building and rebuilding these areas or helping to stand up against bad governments in their own areas. So instead, they all just flee here and leave all the people in their towns to just collapse there. So it collapses the third world. It collapses Mexico. It collapses South America. And then it collapses us. It's not good for anyone except for the few people who are being greedy and just want to grift off of the system. Right. You know, so it's like um, uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's January 6th and it's going to be this and that. And it's a setup, you know, and it's like. The thing is, is how could we can't live like that? That's that's like literally letting the terrorists win. The terrorists being the being the federal government at this point in the game in the New World Order. Right. They want us to be afraid. That's why the January sixth thing was done. They had it pre-scripted ahead of time. They wanted people to to say, "Oh, you can never be. We don't want to wave American flags. We don't want to be J 6 So that means now they don't even have to do anything. The left can gather in giant masses. They can shake the literal gates of the white house and not a fucking person uh, that i know of right. has been arrested because of that and meanwhile we've got random old ladies there's a few people that did get a wee bit out of control uh, on on uh on j6 but not one single person killed anyone and they literally found no guns on any of the people so if you're telling me that the right wing of america owns more guns than anyone else on the planet right we 
got a pre-planned idea. I want to say we, I wasn't there. I mean, the right wing, the MAGA extremists. Right, right. That we had a plan to overthrow the government and everyone just got there like like a, a, a joke scene out of a wedding. Like, did you get the ring? Did you get the ring? Hey, did you bring the guns? Did you, I forgot. I thought we thought you brought the guns. Exactly. Like, I'm pretty sure if the American people decide to overthrow this fucker, right. we're going to bring some weapons, okay? More than a damn flagpole, right? Believe that. Believe that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, well, you know, I guess, but then the next question is, all right, you know, where do we go from here? Because essentially we've got half the country, right, that 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 remembers what this used to be and sees this disassembly. And then we've got an entire other half of the country. And I'm hoping that it's getting better, that, that people are getting, uh, you know, I guess red-pilled or black-pilled or whatever the hell you want to call it, waking up to the fact that, this is not, I mean, and it's not even a, a thing about right or left anymore. It's about a group of elite people that think they know how we all down here should live and what we should say and what we should do and what we should eat and how it should be, right? And that's completely antithetical to what America's always been. So where do we go from here? Because, I mean, you know, it's like, all right, well, Donald Trump comes back in the office or whoever the hell and... And because uh, I think we're living under authoritarianism right now at this very moment. But you, you have to get people educated once again on actual real history. We've gone so far. They've changed the language so much that people are disassociated from actual reality. They've played the word game, you know, the word salad game with illegal immigrants and then, you know, just migration. And they drop all the things. And it happens like that with abortion and everything. So we got a bunch of people that don't understand each other. They can't talk to each other. All they want to do is, you know tear each other's you know hair out where do we go from here how do we fix this broken mess well it's a doozy if it wasn't if it wasn't so hard it would have been fixed by now um i mean obviously we all get frustrated i've done speeches before where um basically talking about how you know the left always uh seems like they they want a civil war you know it's like and and that's why a lot of people like alex jones and, and other people are saying don't give them what they want that's what they want, because once once you get physical, then they can click the entire military industrial complex and, and go full bore. Like, you know, I don't know where you stand on the Israel thing, but, you know, it, it's not working out too well for the people in Gaza right now. All they needed was their subtext. It's kind of like their January 6th, obviously way worse, thousands of people dying. Right. But they have basically a stand down false flag or situation that they they set up and then they can just unleash absolute hell on the enemy right. you know what i mean so it's like it's it's the disproportionate of uh response of what of what they want to do to the american people like they, they want to round us all up they want to put us all in jail anybody that that, that talks about it and they want to have the leftists dancing around in the streets doing tiktok videos laughing about it that's what they want. Right, right. And the thing is, is that the so-called left or so-called liberal, you know, they used to be liberal, you know. I mean, I was probably more liberal leaning, let's say, you know, I I, I like to go to concerts. I you know, right, used to smoke not, a lot of weed. Leftism now. It's not it's not yeah. liberalism. I mean, like Tim Pool talks about he used to be a classic liberal, right? Exactly. But I mean, it's even more than that. Honestly, I don't think they have any ideology at all. I think all they are is the segment of the population that is more susceptible to mind control. Mm. And I don't know what exactly it is, but it seems like whatever that TV tells them to think, that's what they think. It doesn't matter if it's war is bad or war is good or, you know, Israel is bad or Israel is good or vaccines are bad or vaccines are good or uh, trees are good. No, trees are bad. Bill Gates says, we're going to cut down the trees. I mean, we want to be smart or not. And you left us be like, yeah, I mean, yeah, we got to get rid of trees. Spent your entire life standing up for trees. You know, that just by normal nature, living in the world, you know, trees are freaking awesome. They breathe in carbon dioxide. They breathe out. They create shade. They lower the temperature. Trust the science. Okay. And they basically give these uh, very low... I don't know if even know if it's about an IQ is some part of their brain has been damaged or whatever, maybe at a young age, or I, I, I really, I really don't know what is the well, actual determining the social, factor. Social like that. Media People that really seem had a lot to do with it. I think the social media and I think this constant thing in front of us. And, you know, I, you, you just, we were watching some of your background stuff when I was doing background on you and you brought up uh Yuval Noah Harari, <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Okay is evil from the pit of hell right he just believes that 
you know, morals and ethics and crap, they're just stuff we made up. They don't have anything to do with coming from some outside, you know, whatever. And it's just like Santa yeah. Claus, right? And this guy's involved in AI and all sorts of stuff. Uh, well, Yuval Harari is in a way really not that smart. He just is telling you what is coming down the pike. But yeah, he has the video of where he's like, you cut open a human being, you do not see any rights inside exactly, the and when he and when he says that i mean it sounds like he's done it before i mean you know that people believe these guys i, I think that people probably go a little over the edge on everyone's a satan worse where they're all killing yeah. and drinking baby blood i mean i think we would have caught more people doing that by now I, i'm sure there's plenty of it going on but not to the level that people really think i think that's a little bit of that hysteria but i mean in a way, you could say like Arthur C. Clarke or the people who, or 1984 George Orwell could be, cons can, you could say, is he like a Yuval Noah Harari? Because he's saying this is where this is going and this is what the future is. I think a lot of people put too much stock in him and because he's really just reading. I mean, if you look at old Star Trek, you know people are going to merge with machines. You know that there's going to be AI. There's going to be virtual reality. People are going to live in virtual reality. These aren't new ideas. But just because you talk like this and you're at the World Economic Forum, people believe that you are some kind of genius mm. when you're really not. Right, he's right, just right. basically just just he's just a puppet, just a mouthpiece. Now Klaus Schwab, I get the sense that he has a pretty big dick swinging. He he walks in the room there at the WEF, and people are like, "Whoa, it's fucking Klaus!" Like it's yeah. Emperor Palpatine yeah. rolls in the room, um, and again, he's kind of just like you know, but he loves it. It's it's not like we have to be we have to be careful because. You know, the world, we could be taken over by robots. But instead, he's just like, well, we're going to get taken over by robots. And pretty soon, you'll all be dead. <laughs> right. You'll have nothing right and love it. With it. Yeah, he's right to help. Yeah. There with and, it. and they just sit around talking about not how to mitigate it or stop it or, or have a counterbalance to it. Just how to take advantage of it and how great it's going to be when humanity's over. I mean, regardless, well, you talked to me earlier about uh, God and believing God and stuff like that. God is real. I mean... Did you invent the universe? Could you could, look how hard it takes thousands of years of human uh, ingenuity and evolution and all the individual humans creating the iron and the widgets and the glass and the plastic and all every human on earth, all this effort to make one of these clunky robots that walks around. And, and don't get me wrong. Those things are going to be a problem pretty soon in the Boston dynamic stuff, but look at how much effort that goes in. And that's not even close to the, complexity of a human body right. down one to the, the atom the things that was really one of the greatest things that that i read was darwin's black box and i don't know you know anything about the blood clotting process but there's about 217 proteins involved and this whole list of cascading things that has to happen right and so it's like if any one of those things doesn't isn't perfect or right or if there's a disease or a break in the link blood clotting doesn't happen less better it just doesn't happen at all the animal bleeds out so, you know, how the hell do you evolve into something like that, right? Or take thousands of years for a flower to look like a bee so the bee will come there. It's like it didn't happen overnight, right? So a lot of the things that are supposedly put forth these days that science aren't necessarily science. And I think that like the Bible says, right? You know, the heavens are telling of the glory of God and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. All you got to do is like look around and say, all right, there's just too much complexity. I'm a mathematician and a physicist. Uh, by education, which was before I went to seminary. And so I, you know, I hold science is in my head does not compete with religion. They're quite complementary, as a matter of fact, and much of science mm -hmm. exists because of the church. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's, there's definitely something going on. And I think that my personal feeling is that until our country starts to repent, what, you know, turn from our wicked ways, whatever you want to call that, right? But I mean, murdering babies, like in the womb, Oh, you know, and it's just, just by the thousands and all these mm -hmm. corporate sins, like you talked about, you know, the middle military industrial complex and all the, the blood that, you know, is on this country's hands. And I'm not one of those people to say that America is a terrible place because we did some bad things, but man, we got a lot of people that stand to, you know, uh, benefit from this government doing things the way they want them done and not for our best interest down here, you know? And at this point, I mean, sometimes I think that something 
barring some divine intervention, I don't see a good outcome for us. I see violence and bloodshed. I don't personally, I don't even see we're going to have another election. I think they're going to pull something off like the Civil War, World War II, three, I mean, and, you know, suspend powers, you know, martial law or something. I don't know. I can't visualize it. I can't see it because of a lot of models, you know, the fourth turning and, you know, you've heard of, uh, you know, right now we're at the point where weak men have created, you know, bad times and bad times are creating good men, right? And these are the good and men. And it's like going to take a long time for them, good men, to make good times. And then, uh, you know, the cycle goes around. I, I hear you, man. The black pill is is very strong, and I fight it myself. I mean, um, like I said, the, the creation of the universe, the creation of all the complexity, space, time, matter, and infinite amount of complexity all working together in a total symphony makes you kind of believe that somehow or another, there's got to be something that works out. For example, you see a tree fall in the forest, like, oh my God, it's the end, the tree fall. But then the tree becomes mulch and then the mulch becomes mushrooms and the mushrooms spread and then they, they, they clear the soil for the next tree to grow and it grows bigger and stronger than ever before the, the, the forest grows. So at some level, God must have foreseen these, these type of events. And I mean, I hate to say it, but there is a possibility uh, worked into the system might be things like giant meteorite impacts or uh, mass flooding or comets or some crazy um, apocalyptic type event. Because personally, when you, you talk about us making it politically, I see that as very secondary to making it like through with AI, I don't think that's going to turn out very well. Right. I mean, the, the very people that are, that are the only thing that I can really, to be honest, see is uh, escaping us from that would be like literally like a meteorite impact to put us back to the stone age because people aren't going to stop building it. I was on it. I was on Infowars as a, as a phone caller, probably before I ever was on the show, before I ever went viral talking about how we need to have like a Geneva convention for ai where it's like you know if you can't have a computer that's beyond 70 percent of the of the intelligence of like the average or to low to average human being and it would basically be looked at like nuclear waste like oh my god this microchip is too strong you can't have that we have to we have to protect this but then a lot of these other people say well then the, the government will still do it and then because the the governments will do it they get scared that the other government's going to do it so they have to do it to compete to compete yeah, right. with it right. so in a way there's kind of no escape and the people that say if it's in the hands of the people at least we'll have some protection against it because then once they once they unleash that weapon upon the people if we don't have some like you know like our second amendment we'll be completely defenseless but then people like Elon Musk talk about you know the only way to uh, get through it is to is to merge with it. And this merging concept, I find completely ridiculous because mm. because uh, basically the concept that you're going to merge with this thing is I foresee the, the the merging time being from anywhere from one year to maybe 50 years at the absolute maximum oh, before the human component is completely irrelevant and just is just tossed out of the equation. Sure. Because at a certain point, the amount of things it's going to be able to get done, and we can already see where it's going. This is not really theoretical anymore, you know. Uh, and then if it gets robot bodies or decides it doesn't even want a body and just wants to live in a in a in a virtual world, or you know, the only one thing that could save us is it might become super intelligent and be like, "This place is so boring. I'm out of here. You guys are annoying as fuck. Late." <laughs> One of the things, you know, that that, uh, I, that I've been thinking about a lot, and, and from a Christian perspective, you know, I was saved 20 years ago, and I, I could give a rat's ass for when Jesus was coming back 20 years ago. I mean, not exactly, all right? I preached about it, I talked about it, and I said, you know, guys, it's him, and he's coming back. But I knew everybody, you know, since the last 2,000 years saying Jesus is coming back, right? And it didn't happen in their lifetime. But, you know, with the way things are going and start looking at things, I have a renewed interest, right, in seeing what's going on. And, yeah. And, and I really, really think, like, I just posted something. I said, it, it, wrap your mind around this. I read a, an article that had a picture that was generated by AI, and the article was written by AI, and it was convincing you why you shouldn't be afraid of AI. Now, that scares the shit out of me. Do you understand that, you know— because yeah. what we're talking about is this thing that is going to be much more intelligent than us. And so I kind of spawn this sort of idea that maybe 
the Antichrist is going to come up. Like, if you look at it just from a biblical perspective, the Bible says that this, this per thing will be treated like a god, right? Or got like mm -hmm. God, it'll perform miracles. Well, what, yeah. what exactly in our secular world are people going to bow their knee to? They don't accept the, any god, mostly. It's going secular, right? So it, I'm, my theory is is that perhaps it's going to be this super intelligence, and then somehow when they do uh, use, because it's supposed to be a human, maybe that. I don't know. Hyper plausible. Very, 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 very plausible. That's a totally plausible future. I could fully see that occurring uh, on about a 90% chance. Uh, the thing is, like I say, the, mer the merging with it, it'll be like for there'll be a period of time where you have like the, the, the chip in your head and, it, and it's like, you can connect to the internet and you can order things and it will do math for you. Like uh, it will eventually the apps will just start overtaking. You'll be like, Oh, I, it can speak Spanish for me now. And it's like, will you give me access to your uh, vocal cords and your, you like your mic sure, sure. and your things that you're like, okay, sure. And you're like, Hola, senor, and you'll be like talking through it. And then eventually you can turn that. There'll be an app that will say, Oh, be funny at parties. And it will right. just tell jokes for you. Right. And you'll be getting laid by girls. Cause they're like, you're so funny. Oh my God. Well, the and then too, eventually you'll you're... just turn more and more uh, uh, of your brain off and right. let this thing take over. What the, uh, to be honest, I, I can, the only advantage to, to the merger I could see at all in the long term would be possibly that the math has been done, that God knew what he was doing when he was creating humans. And we're pretty much, that, I mean, if you go to China or, you know, see what they built the pyramids or these different areas with rice, like uh, you can feed a human being a couple of cups of rice and you can build pyramids. You can, you can build an entire planet. And then when one dies, they just have birth and you have another one. Uh -huh. And so, you don't actually, it, we're kind of like a very low cost. Like if you think about a, a, one of these robots that will be like us, that's going to be a lot of maintenance. It's going to be a lot of parts and it's going to cost quite a bit to keep this thing up more than, you know, if you if you kill off a human at about age 40, they're pretty economical. If you feed them rice, you know, you right, get right, you get a good right, 40 right. years out of them. So it could be you just put the chip in and it's just cheaper for the Matrix to have humanoid robots. So it'll basically take over your complete. You'll be gone and you'll just be a flesh bot rolling around doing the work of whatever the thing is like. Yeah, we don't. There's no point in having robots in the factory. We just have all these uh, humanoids that are just completely lost, that have no no conscience anymore, and are just basically the physical flesh well, bot. And these people, of, are, these people the AI. are gonna take it. The people that are running around with the phones right now, the low the low information voters, the ones that are told what to believe and what to think. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna do this. They're gonna take this. And whether the mark of the beast is. You know, you got to do this to buy and sell or to get into the store. Or mm -hmm. It's 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 going to invade every aspect of our lives. And what I'm having trouble with is daily waking up feeling like, holy crap. I mean, this is Terminator. Like, we are here, man. I mean, I watched yeah. Elon Musk's rock, two rockets landed. Now, I'm a physicist. I almost crapped my pants when I saw two rockets simultaneously land on two separate pads at the same time. I said, oh, my God, you know, like, this is it. Like, we're going to be going to Mars and doing this crap that we saw in the movies before. And but, but you know, we're also living in a dystopian reality of authoritarianism that's coming along with all this technology. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I just I, it's hard to imagine how humans will will actually survive on the other side of it or human consciousness, you know, like a bastardized uh, AI human form, because the AI basically is in a way going to reflect a lot of human consciousness but no individual conscious human it would be just you know it'll be it'll be literally a collective borg of all human thought like everything that's ever been on the internet is uh is going to be part of its collective understanding yeah well who rolls um, into the crap on the internet that's the thing i mean i talk to grok and these ai things right and i ask them a pretty simple question like I said, all right, LGBTQAI+, plus, how can you have bisexual, which believes in two genders, uh, mm -hmm. along with somebody that's gender fluid, blah, 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 in the same, quote, community? It gave me a, you know, seven, eight paragraph explanation about how silly little human, let me explain it to you. <laughs> Oh really? Oh, did it start yeah. making? Did it start making sense? <laughs> oh, well, no, it's. A, I mean, did it say it in such a way to where you're like, well, okay, you got a point. Like, it's was it smart enough? To logic do that? is what it is, you know, and it folds back on yeah. itself, and none of it makes sense. But, um, but it's coming in all areas, and it's just washing all over us. And you know, like I yeah. said, I just right now, if if you don't personally have a relationship with God, I'm you know talking to people out there in the audience. 
now would be a good no. time, whatever that star looking, because um, yeah, human beings <clears throat> are shit, you know. I mean, in my opinion, uh, most of the people in my life I've been hurt by, right? And and I'm surprisingly, you know, people that have been close to me, you know, garbage human beings, right? And no. and 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 my life has been a rude awakening that people in general are capable of some very awful things, and especially when their 401ks on the line. I mean, I was listen. We were watching you with uh, rant at those uh, troll those cops, man, uh, at the beach. Yeah, and you were and you were saying, you know, man, you got your 401k, you got all these things, you just do what you're told, right? And the sad reality is they're they're all becoming jackboots, especially when they force out. I all forgot the about that, Rand. I gotta repost that one. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's really, um, it's it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, just doing my job, just doing my job, just well, doing my job. What um, I admire about you is the that you're out on the front line doing it, and that's what we aspired to do in 2020. I sat there and watched the live streamers out there and the people that were like, you know, with anti fog going against it, and like. I just wanted to be in the fight. I burned up my friends, you know, on, on messenger. I don't have any more friends. Anymore. I didn't want to hear it because I was losing my damn mind in 2020, which is why I developed a podcast on the show and want to talk to people like you. So it's my therapy, yeah. you know, my way of doing what I can do, like the shirt I'm wearing, right? All that evil, you know, needs to prosper is for good men to do nothing. Right. I agree. That's exactly all it needs because, uh, you know, the, the evil isn't really that smart or that powerful. It's amazing that just the amount of people that will just literally just ignore it and like, let it go along. They won't, they won't say anything. I mean, it, it was kind of my, the first time that I went viral on the, in, on the vaccine passport thing with Fauci, the hell Fauci rant. Yeah. 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 The, thing was that the entire world was under the impression in pre <clears throat> under the oppression of the 24 seven COVID, COVID, COVID mask, 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 vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. You could, you couldn't change the channel. You couldn't escape it. It was like being on a bad acid trip. You're just like, Oh my God, get me out of here. I can't do like, There's no way to turn it off. You go to the store at the signs, the signs, the people, the walking, it's just, it was never ending. And there was certain segment of the population, myself and others that were like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. But literally nobody said it. Like I said it. And the, and the reason why it went viral is because that's actually what everyone was thinking, mm -hmm. but nobody could actually just break out of the matrix to actually do it. So well, that's, dude, that was been what trained to be nice. Okay. Especially yeah. Christians. I did a talk about that the other day is like, you know, I posted a post is that we're not supposed to be nice. Okay. Did Christianity and niceness have nothing to do with each other. We're supposed to be opposed to evil. Right. We're supposed yeah. to fight. I feel it. like that's that's one issue I have with some of the uh, I know people claim that everything's the way it's supposed to be and the books are all perfect and everyone. It's just the Holy Roman Empire was in charge of all of the books for so long. And I know they've kicked out certain books of the Apoph Apocrypha. And I just have a feeling that the that they kept it, they basically fact checked and kept what they want turn the other cheek that sounds good yeah you know, oh give on to caesar yeah yeah that that we like that keep yeah, that well, in part about now, they're, just turning it, over the tables you know yeah i'm glad they tables. kept the turning over the tables it's just really strange that we're two thousand years later and we're still dealing with the same money changers isn't it <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but i mean how the is word, that the dude? word is eternal what it's never the fuck? Change, right it's the root of all evil the damn money right and 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 one of the things is we've never been my i've made some stupid financial decisions you would say but i did them because i was following something other than money right i had some passion i mean this whole thing if this ever makes any well it wasn't really a financial decision and you weren't right. making a financial decision right, right. you're you're making a passion or a life decision which turned out to have negative financial impact but it, you, you weren't sitting there going i know what how i'm gonna right. you know <laughs> trust me this nothing i'm doing is is designed to make money uh it's that's one thing that does suck is that you you on the left you have a george soros's and these type of people who like small accounts or little whack jobs, you know, like Antifa, even down to the Antifa foot soldiers who like get payments, like stipends to go to things and, and oh, yeah. to be part of these different things. Whereas on the right, we literally get nothing, dude. I've been in this for fucking ever. I've been in this for years and years. I've been in some of the biggest protests, like hat ran events and made zero dollars off of it. 
I mean, you know, it would be you nice if there was some mansion yet. <laughs> no, I'm in my garage right now. I'm in a garage that that uh, the doubles as my my day job as a handyman, basically an unlicensed contractor. I like building things. And it's also my glass studio, which I created the American Liberty Awards and uh, some other things. I uh, used to make pipes, lots of pipes and bongs back in the day. Nice. So I, I'm a, I'm a multitasker. And in the meantime, I'm just trying to save the planet and wake everybody the fuck up. All right, man. Well, if it's any consolation to you, um, I, I say that my studio has an attached restroom, but actually my studio is just kind of part of the restroom. So I'm living in a 900 square foot cedar cabin in the middle of the woods. Uh, Are you? Yeah. 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 We're off. Green I green. love it. I love the backdrop there. Actually. I really dig that backdrop with all that, with that, with, with just the different stuff that's up on it. Oh, it's very, it's very, uh, yeah, it very rough. I was hoping yeah, it rusty. didn't come off too much like Ruby Tuesdays, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of got a similar gig going on here, you know? Yeah, man. Um, I like the wood, man. Yeah. I like the wood. I definitely like yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, you're, I yeah. mean, you're, you're, yeah, what I, what I really like about you, and I kind of want to wrap this up a little bit, but one of the things that I love yeah. is, about you is the fact that, and I've tried to tell myself this, I came out of a, High, high, a lot of education, ivory towers. And like I said, and, you know, I spent a lot of time putting together thoughts for very, very intelligent people. And now, you know, I'm just trying to throw stuff out there and say, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be like, I don't care about my exactness of speech anymore. You know, it's not important. It's, it's what we're talking about. And, and it's more important. And I think that's why so many people are just so afraid to get up and, and to do this and to say, you know, I need to speak out. I need to open my mouth, trusting that what will come out of your mouth is what needs to come out, right? Because I think we all need to start realizing there's a spiritual battle around us and pick a side, right? Whether whether it's Jesus you believe in or whatever, pick a side. There's a good and evil. I got to believe that. And so, yeah, men need to start doing something. So I've been encouraging people. I got two, three people want to start podcasts. And so I got a new guy. He's got a computer and whatever he wants to come on. And we're going to lift him up and we're going to... Uh, talk to him for a while and just start lifting up some ordinary men that want to have voices. And I see this happening with among common people. And so I want to encourage people to do that. All right. So you got another guest coming up. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I just next show next time, couple of weeks, I got more people like, yeah. you know, that, that uh, I just want to yeah. bring on people that are just whoever I can talk to, you know, to, 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 to that. Cause I'm not the only one that's been out there frustrated. I've got people coming to me going, Man, I made these videos in my garage, you know, it's my therapy, you know, I just went to the mic and I started, you know, I was going to lose my mind if I didn't start, you know, talking. And so I've got yeah. these men coming to me and I'm like, it seems like there's an army of people that are amplifying the truth and the, the message of the truth and lifting up people like you and me. Uh, I mean, praise God, we just passed 10,000 uh, subscribers or, or followers on X, man. Just blew up. Wow, man. awesome. That's tight. So, uh, hey, yeah, I mean, send me send me a clip of this, and then I'll post a link to the uh, to the video too, and I'll put it out there. Uh, if you actually send me a link to the whole thing, I'll I'll put the whole thing on uh, band video, cool on the info too. Cool. So you'll well, get really some shout over there. Yeah, it's all about. It's everyone has to you know get rid of their ego and and deal with everybody that's out there and come together. And like you were saying, it it is unfortunate. I've dealt with the same thing with. You know, not to be black pill, but but there is a there is a dark streak in humanity, and uh, there's a lot of backstabbing people go on about, and we have to really focus on what we can do and, and what we can pull together, you know, and and stop trying to be about me, 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 and this and that because you're there's no way any one of us is gonna is gonna win this battle. Trust me, this battle is so huge mm. that the, the number one thing we are gonna need is that spiritual component, either either a literal return of Jesus, right. Or at least a very, a very real return to Jesus moment where we realize what we what we're about to lose, right. and how important well, it is. Yeah, to be right. Unified. I think the yeah. Constitution. I think if, you know, besides the spirituality, is just if you want to leave that completely out. Just man, look at the Constitution of the United States of America. That's the central organizing principle. I love of the it. Republic, and that's where we. I love it. I'm always like, and that's why I'm always have, wondering such a problem when people bring in you know you can't have little somalia in our country or you can't have people that believe in sharia law those things don't agree with the constitution and so as long as we agree i don't care who comes here right 
I'm not racist. I know you're not racist. None of us are, and they try and paint us. I, and I'm not xenophobic except for the fact that I am scared of other ideals besides the organizing principle of the Constitution of the United States of America. And that's pretty much the way I look at it. It's an amazing document. It's the best thing. I, I, I'm When I first learned what it, what it said, and I, I just couldn't believe it, I'm just like, why does anybody have a problem with this thing? All it's telling us is what our rights and what they can't, what the government can't do to us. It's like, if you read it, it's just saying the government can't do this to you. The government can't do that to you. The government can't do this. You'll have the right to defend yourself. You'll always be able to speak. You'll, you won't be considered guilty. You won't, you'll have freedom of religion. He's like, what is not to like? I just don't get it, man. Right, right, right. <laughs> it, it's definitely worth fighting for. doesn't like it. Authoritarian doesn't like it. And I guess probably on that end, we'll just go, We'll just keep fighting the battle right next to each other brother for for coming on with us i appreciated it just uh totally humble to have a guest such as you as my first guest i hope this is not the uh, oh. last time that we ever do this hey do me a favor and and, and just tell people where to find you because when i upload this myself they'll be it'll be my followers and you can explain to them where to find you i'll do it all right right now thank you very much we are True Slinger, Hippie Chick, and Mad Baker. We're the hell out of here. See ya. Mm -hmm.